Gentlemen, welcome to the Be The Man podcast. I'm your host, Greg Denning. I got an awesome uh, question from a listener who is overseas and was struggling with some relationships. It was a great question and great insights. And as I was uh, responding to him and communicating, I thought, you know what, this is, this is valuable for all of us. Because as men in life, we are going to have lots of relationships. At least I hope so. It is a lonely, miserable life if you don't have relationships. And if we learn how to do relationships and we are in relationships with high caliber people, then our lives get richer and better and happier. And I think it's critically important to point out that being in relationships is a skill set. It's not luck. It's not you know, a have or a have not. It's not chance. It's skill. And the great news is that anybody can learn this stuff and, and it just can be practiced and changed. And if you have just outright sucked at relationships, you can change. You can get better. And, and maybe you've always struggled in relationships. You just never had the skill set. And maybe you didn't even know it was a skill set. It's not something you're stuck with. It's not something you're stuck in. And even if you've been that way for a long time, time you can create a transformation. I've done it, created transformations in myself and developed brand new skills and totally transformed my relationships. And I help people do this, literally get to help men do this every day. And they make massive changes in themselves and in their relationship skill set and it changes everything. Again, ap- apply this to any other aspect, right? If you're, if you're trying to get fantastic at your favorite sport or and your craft for work, whatever it is you do, whether you're a soldier or a, I'm trying, <laughs> like a coder. I'm trying to come up with something on top of my mind. Or, or an attorney or a surgeon, right? Whatever it is you do will massively leveling up your skills in your craft or your sport or your hobby make a difference. Well, absolutely. Of course it will. It, it changes the whole dynamic. It changes your experience and the pleasure and reward and fulfillment and meaning you get from it but it also drastically changes your outcomes. It is absolutely true with relationships as well. That is great news. And so we can begin today immediately to make those changes. Now, some of you in your heads right now, your survival brain is going, no, I've always been like this. It's, it's been like this for too long. There's no hope, I can't do this. And I'm here to say absolutely yes, yes you can. Yes, you can. I don't care how long you've been stuck in it. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. I don't care how much trauma you experienced in the past and and why you feel like you're stuck and the stories you're telling yourself. And I'm not trying to be cold-hearted here and and ignorant. I realize there's a lot of tough things we go through. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. But in spite of all of that, we still have a choice. And we can still make choices on a daily basis to develop new skills and to improve our relationships. It's huge. So, man, uh, I'm, excited. I'm excited to talk about this, and I want to share that first and foremost. We have to, absolutely must, take ownership for the part we play in our relationships. For, and again, you have to be responsible for the energy you bring to it, whether that's a negative energy or a positive energy, whether it's happy or, or sad, whether it's elated or depressed. You have to be responsible for the energy you bring. In fact, for everything you bring and and for what you receive as well because you're not a victim. You're not a little baby. And some of us, we want to retreat into being a little boy or being a little baby, but that doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't help us get what we want and it, it doesn't make the relationship any better. It makes it worse. And there's no relationship that gets better because of whining or retreating or numbing or avoiding. It just doesn't work. So take ownership for that, for whatever you're bringing. Take responsibility for it. And that feels heavy. But when you bear up under that load and you take back that power, it actually it's actually empowering because you realize, oh, there's something I can do about this. I'm not a victim here. I'm not helpless. And some of us have some learned helplessness that we've picked up. And we feel like we're just stuck and there's nothing we can do. And Man, that's, that's got to be the worst feeling ever to feel hopeless. 
in uh, in Dante's um, Inferno, that that great classic book, he he's writing this description of this imaginary trip to hell, and over the archway going into hell, it says, "Abandon all hope, ye who enter here." And that's that's a definition of hell, right? It's just being hopeless, of uh, feeling there's there's no way out, there's no chance for change or transformation, there's no hope, and I want to adamantly declare today gentlemen that there is hope and you start making changes and your relationship starts changing in fact i want to share this i shared this with my wife um in our in our podcast and our trainings if you if you see your relationships like as a sum it's you plus the other person equals the relationship and you just see it as a number so if i'm a five and my wife is a five then our relationship is a ten and if you know, if I'm a one and my wife's a five, then our relationship is a six. But what's super cool about that is if just one person begins to rise and add more to themselves, then it automatically adds to the relationship. So if you begin to rise and you go from a five to a six to a seven to an eight, and even if the other person, whether it's your wife or one of your children or a neighbor or colleague or whatever, if they stay where they are, and even if they drop a little, you can keep lifting and rising. And so if my wife stays at a five and I become an eight, our relationship's a 13. She, she didn't have to change for our relationship to get better, to become more. But what happens is you become the tide. And when the tide comes into the harbor, it lifts all the boats. And so you start this rising effect of changing and getting a skill set, and it has this positive effect. Some things happen immediately. Like you could, you could see positive improvements in your relationships immediately, today, right now. You listen to this and you apply it, boom, you start seeing some changes. Other things start happening over time, but they will happen. And it'll stir things up. And it may make some things more uncomfortable. You start changing and they're like, hey, what's going on here? And it, some people start to feel threatened. Because now they're, they're unsure. Like you used to react a certain way. Now you're not reacting anymore. Like what in the world? They used, you used to come home and they were afraid of how you'd come home. Which gentlemen, ooh, man, that one gets me fired up. Do not be like that. If your wife or your children have to walk on pens and needles or, or they're a little bit anxious or afraid or uncertain. Oh no, here, dad's coming home. And they have no idea, like, is he going to be angry today? Is he going to scream and yell? Is he going to be depressed? Is he going to take it out on me? Is he coming home looking for trouble? Is he going to just come home and criticize me? And is he going to yell again, explode? That is absolutely unacceptable. And that needs to stop immediately. Your wife and children should be excited, anticipating your arrival. They should be looking forward to you coming back. And if they're scared or are worried about it or want to, they don't want you to come back, right? They're like, oh, no, it, oh, here comes dad. Oh, crap, dad's home. Okay, everyone on your best behavior. Like, oh, everyone, watch out. Like, if, if they're in any way, shape, or form, like, dreading you coming home, you've created that, and you got to change it, massively change it, right? Be responsible for that and, and be the tide and lift all those relationships. So, yeah, some things will get stirred up. Um, as you rise, right, and it starts lifting everything and it lifts some of the issues that need to be addressed, which is a good thing, right? If you start rising and rising and it, it brings uh, issues to the surface, fantastic. Because once you, t you, you can talk about it, once it comes, like once you can express it, then you can talk about it. And once you can talk about it, then you can resolve it. And then you just start resolving them one after another and it actually snowballs in your favor. Where you just resolve one issue after another. It's, it's amazing, I get to do this every day with clients and with um, the Be The Man tribe and the coaching group. And we're just working through dynamics of, of our relationships, our skills, and just becoming our best self. So uh, the, the question specifically was, how, how can I work through the preoccupied attachment style? So I will define this for all of us. I went and looked up the definition. So a, a preoccupied, and, and again, man, we live in a time and place where they have a definition for everything, all right? They want to label everything. 
And in some cases, it's helpful to, to be able to label or name something. Sometimes it's a bit too much. And we're taking on labels as part of our identity. And we start you know, embracing that. And the more we embrace an identity, the more we behave that way. Because identity and behavior are directly linked. Like if you say, I'm a runner, I'm a runner, I'm a runner, I'm a runner. Well, what do you do? You run, man. And if it's cold or windy or snowing or raining, like, so what? You're a runner. You run. You get out and you run because you identify as a runner. And the more you take on identities and labels, the more you live them. Like, it becomes your reality. Let that sink in. Whatever you identify as, your identity and your behavior are directly linked, and it becomes your reality. So be extremely, extremely careful about what you say about yourself. Even down to things like, oh, I'm bad with names. I am bad with names. That's an identity. And you'll, you will play that out because you believe it's a fixed mindset. You take it on as identity and you'll just keep doing it. And so you can make those transformations. So even with this and, and other attachment styles, we can learn from them. We can think through them. We can notice traits or characteristics or symptoms or commonalities or common denominators. And we can just notice them. And we can learn from them so we can improve our behavior. But we don't have to read it and go, oh, man, that's me. Great. I have that. Like it's some disease you have and there's no cure. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to your, fit, your wife or your children. Don't do it to other people either. If you say, oh, that's interesting. I've, I've, been, uh, I've been behaving a certain way. I'm, I'm going to change that. And you can change it. So you don't have to say, oh, I have that. I have that illness or disease, whatever, like, oh, okay, I've been behaving that way and I can change this. And I, that is such a powerful framework and it helped me totally transform my life, which I'm, I'll tell a little bit about this in this conversation, a little bit about my life story. But it, when I, when I just released that identity, when I, when I saw it as a behavior, something I was just doing, then I could change. I was actually working with um, a client recently who kind of, um, it's, it's a speech thing. And so his, his parents and others told him, like, oh, you have a speech impediment. And I was working with him and watching. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't have a speech impediment. You just keep your mouth really closed so that you pronounce some of your words like a baby. You, you don't have a speech impediment. You're just closing your mouth. If you bring your lips in, in close and pronounce those words, it's baby talk. And when you, when you walk through, again, this is relevant to this, today's conversation. You'll see in a minute here. If you've been treated that way as a little baby, and if you've been coddled, and you've been told that you're a baby, you've been, you know, they've treated you like a victim, and you've believed yourself to a victim, and, and you just take on this identity, a victim identity, and like, oh, I have this, and oh, there's nothing I can do about it, then you carry on with that behavior. And and I was, I was pointing that out. I'm like, no, 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 wait. No, you don't have a speech impediment. Like, you're just... Let me just watch your mouth. Like, yeah, when you say that word, your lips are really tight and close together, and that's causing a sound. So it's, it's literally just you need to open up your mouth. And I said, let's practice it. I said, open your mouth really wide and say those words. And he was able to pronounce them perfectly. I'm like, there you go, right? It's not a speech impediment. It's just a habit. You've, you say those words with your mouth closed. And again, it's, there was a lot there, right? There's a lot of issues from childhood and some trauma and some other things that have really kept him closed in and insecure and afraid and it played out in how he speaks and, I, and as i worked with him right there i just open your mouth really wide you, you just the way you shape your lips and use your tongue is what's causing the sound it's not that you have a speech impediment and you can't it's not that you cannot say it correctly you can you just have to open your mouth and you're gonna have to train yourself to do it differently and he was so resistant to it he just he wanted to keep the label and he wanted to keep the identity because Gosh, that would be that would be work to learn how to speak differently again, and and he kind of held on to it, but but don't do that, gentlemen. Okay, so preoccupied attachment style. This is what it says online. An infant develops a preoccupied attachment style when they receive inconsistent care from their primary caregiver. The child becomes unsure about the caretaker's availability and whether they will be there for them when needed. Super important. And very, very common. And you can see this, right? And it's super sad because kids, kids need care. They need touch. They need, 
to have that sense of certainty and security. Every single human being has a deep need for certainty and for security and safety. And so right from the get-go, when, when parents aren't there because of their own issues or whatever else, I mean, who knows? It's, and, and again, as I talk to men all over the world all the time, uh, some had parents, one or, one or more, both parents were alcoholics or drug addicts, some were abusive, um, some died. And like any kind of negligence or whatever, it's just, it's just a wreck, right? Uh, and, I, and I experienced some of this as my, uh, my, my dad left, uh, my mom was trying to raise all these kids by herself and, and had to get a career. And we, we were just broke on food stamps and welfare. And then stepdads came and went, and you never knew what they were going to do or how long they were going to stay, if at all. And so they just came and went and came and went. And, and so I, I, I guess after reading this recently, I was like, oh, man, I, I went through that. I experienced that too. Or it was inconsistent, right? And like I love my mom. And she did, she did a great job. She just was busting her tail. It was a, it was a rough go, right? But it, it was it was there. Um, then there's another thing here. I'm just I'm gonna share some of this stuff for some insight and context. Uh, question is, what are the characteristics of preoccupied attachment style? Characteristics of an ancient an anxious preoccupied attachment include poor self worth, right? Because think about that one. Think through that. Like if if you're in a relationship and you don't know how the other person behave, you often blame yourself and you take it on yourself. Like, oh, it must be me. When most often it's the other person. In fact, this is important here. It's not just with your parents. This could be in like dating relationships, marriage relationships, or you could be, you could be this person to your children. Like you're inconsistent. They don't know what to expect. They don't know if you're going to be angry or happy. They don't know if you're going to be proud. They don't know if you're going to show up the game or just bail out again and, or support them or, or, criticize them like some of you are doing this and it's super super important we get it we get control of this stuff so they have poor self-worth a constant need for reassurance right they are super needy because again they lack certainty and so then they often lack uh, confidence and self-worth and they're because of the need for certainty and security and safety they're just like needy like i need reassurance i need reassurance they have excessive dependence on relationships, right? They don't, they don't feel this sense of independence, like I need somebody. And, and that neediness, isn't this interesting? It's the neediness, the poor self-worth, the need, constant need for reassurance, it actually drives people away. So somebody good comes into your life or is in your life, but, but that neediness, because you're not whole, you haven't resolved some things on your own, you haven't been healed, then the neediness actually drives the person away from you. So even if you're still married, it can drive your marriage away, and it's not near what it could be. Yeah, it can drive your kids away and your family members, friends, um, and, and in relationships. It could drive your wife completely away if you get a divorce or when you're dating, it drives people away. You have to, you have to be cognizant and aware of this stuff. Um, another thing is fear of rejection and abandonment. Right, Those are huge, obviously, because you didn't know what was going to happen and you've been in situations. Again, fellas, like this kind of stuff... It happens so much because other people are just doing their stuff and they have their own issues. Your parents had their own issues and, and they probably weren't very skilled at being parents and didn't you know they didn't have the training. They were just trying to figure out how to be parents. Or if you're in other relationships and you felt rejected a lot or you, you felt abandoned. There's a, we're gonna talk through this here, but all those things you have to like notice them in yourself and start working them on yourself. Otherwise, they just keep causing problems. Because no matter who you're in a relationship with or where you go or what you do, if you have a wound and it doesn't get healed, it just keeps bleeding. Like it'll, it'll constantly bleed no matter where you go, no matter who you're with. That wound will keep bleeding until you heal it. Another thing they have, another characteristic, is problem trusting their partners. Makes sense, right? and hypersensitivity to the moods of others. They're very sensitive because, man, you don't know what they're going to do. And it's one, it's one way here, one way here, super, like super sensitive and reactive, right? This all just makes, it makes a ton of sense. And I hope, I hope that's hitting home. So the, the big issue, this is true for all of us, and, and I hope you're, if you're still listening, thank you, kudos to you for still listening. It's, this, this podcast isn't about that specific thing. It's about all of them. And the first step is just pausing and noticing your own issues. And, and I'm not, 
the tendency is to blame it on other people. Well, well, if my wife would do this, then it'd be different. Or, well, if my kids weren't like that, or they didn't do this, then it'd be different. Well, if my dad or my mom or my, my siblings, my boss, we, we play all that stuff out and it doesn't serve us. It doesn't help us. It does not add value to your life. It's not serving you. So the best thing is to say, well, what, what am I doing? How am I reacting? How am I feeling? What's the root cause here? And this takes a lot of maturity and a lot of humility and a, and a major ability to look in the mirror, like hold up this, the proverbial mirror and look, look at yourself and see yourself and even ask other people to give you an assessment, to give you feedback. And if you see some common denominators, you ask you know, people you trust or get a coach, right? That, that's super helpful. That's what I get to do with my coaching clients. Like, okay, look, this is something I'm observing. And this points out, and you can you can hold the mirror up for them. And say, look, th- it, there's something here that you're doing that you can change. And if across the board, people are like, yeah, you you often do this, you often do this, and and you you hear it from multiple people. Here's your sign, brother. You got something to work on. You got some things to fix. And so it's this huge important awareness. And I had to do this. I had to go through this whole journey. So I grew up, like I told you, in some rough situations, circumstances. I was super lonely, super insecure, super shy. I was desperate. I was depressed. I was fearful. I could not talk to girls. I couldn't look anyone in the eye. I just could not. I, I was so insecure. I couldn't look people in the eye. I, the loneliness was the worst of anything I experienced. I hated being alone. Oh, loneliness is bitter. And sometimes you can be completely alone in a crowded room. But I just felt so lonely. And then I felt, of course, unworthy. And then, you know, would I ever have friends? Would I ever get married? Oh, man. It was just on and on and on. And then when I started making friends, building relationships, I had to notice my own crap. Like, I had to sit down and, and write down. This is important. You have to write down, articulate your issues. If you find yourself being fearful or anxious or worried or reactive, write it down. Go through them one by one. Why do you keep doing that? And do not, gentlemen, do not just do that first level surface layer thinking of like, well, I'm just getting mad because my kids keep doing annoying things. They don't listen to me. Well, that's not it. Right? Well, it's just because my wife. No, nope, that's not it. What are you doing? What, what's the reaction? And then get down to the root cause. What is it? And you've got to do some deep digging, and I hope you spend some time crying about it because the tears will come, and it's part of the healing process, and some pain will come up. And some, this is going to be uncomfortable sometimes, but it's also going to be phenomenal because you're going to do some healing and some recovery. So you, you start just noticing, and, and I want to point this out here. It is so, so, so important. At some point, gentlemen, it doesn't matter what happened to us in our past. It doesn't ha- matter what happened to me. It doesn't matter what happened to you. And I know that sounds harsh, but there's power in that. When you finally draw a line and say, you know what? What's done is done. It's in the past. Honestly, it doesn't matter because from this moment forward, I will determine who I become. I am responsible for my life. My life will be exactly what I make of it. I will be what I make of myself. It doesn't matter what happened to me. It doesn't matter what my dad did. It doesn't matter what my mom did. It doesn't matter what happened in the economy. It doesn't matter what trauma I experienced or or pain or successes or failures or triumph or tragedy. None of that matters at a certain point. It just stops. And and at that point, you can look back and say, you know what, There's I cannot change the past. But 100%, I can change the way I view the past. And I can change what I learn from the past. And I can change what I take with me from the past. And if we look back and use our trauma as an excuse, it hurts us. And why would we do that when we can look back and use our trauma as a reason? Why would we look back and keep the pain when we could look back and get a hold of the power? We can access the power because where there's pain, there's power. And I know, I know this sounds harsh, I know it sounds simplistic, but I did it, I've helped others do it, and it's so powerful when you just stop and say, okay, when I was a kid, that was it, it was a kid. I was, there was nothing I could do about it. But now that I'm a man, I'm gonna stop being a little boy. 
I'm going to stop being a baby, and I'm going to start acting like a man. And men take responsibility for their actions. Men are aware of what they're doing, and they find out why they're doing it, and they address the cause. Not the effect. They're not into symptom management. They're fixing the problem so it goes away for good. So whatever it is, man, if it's overeating, if it's being reactive, if it's being angry, if it's being sullen, if it's numbing or buffering or avoiding, just constantly checking out, if you're super sensitive or you're just like always want to be alone or you're always super needy in your relationships or any of that, that wonderful list we went through, like if you're If you have poor self-worth or constant need of assurance or dependence on relationships, if you're afraid of being rejected or abandoned, if you have a problem trusting people, if you're hypersensitive to the moods of others, like whatever it is, you have to be aware of what you're doing, find out why, and then stop it. In fact, you don't even have to find out why to start stopping it. You could just stop it because you can realize this isn't healthy. This isn't helping. This isn't serving me. It's not serving the person I'm in a relationship with. It's not serving me. So stop. And yes, it is that simple. It's not that easy. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Sometimes you just decide, you flip a switch and say, I'm done. And it, man, if we were together and, and I was there with you and like just <laughs> lovingly but firmly get right in your face and say, you can stop this, right? If somebody held a gun to your head and said, you never do that again, you would do it to save your life, right? Or if they say, hey, look, I'll give you $10 million this year if you just don't do it. Like done. You do it. You have leverage. You can totally do this. You can do superhuman things. But man, you have to want it. And you have to be aware of it. So start noticing what are you doing and why. And then just really carefully think through it. And and realize, own your part of it. Yes, the people you're in a relationship with, they have their things too. And when you get your stuff healed, you can actually be more helpful in helping them heal. I get to do that too in the coaching I get to do and in in the master class in Tribe. Right, we get to help help our brothers become leaders and helpers in their families and lives. And they get to help other people. But you have to heal first. So what are you doing? Think through it. Are you grumpy? Are you unpleasant to be around? Are you overly stressed? Are you angry? Are you reactive? Are you critical, cynical, pessimistic? And, and as I'm saying this, you, you might be tempted to say, well, yeah, but, but it's because this is like this, and oh, it's because like that, and oh, I've tried, and you know, I've tried everything, and well, it's because I had a tough... Right? You start telling yourself the story again. Stop with the stories. Like you literally have to reject the story and just change the story. This, this is where that humility and the honesty comes in. You say, you know what? Man, I am unpleasant to be around. And if you don't know, ask, pay attention. Start, start being more aware. And you might realize, man, you're going you're gonna to have these aha moments of like, man, I didn't, gosh, I didn't, I didn't realize it. I, have a, I mope around all the time. I have a grumpy look on my face. And I start, you start noticing people actually avoid you. Because they don't want to be around you. Or they're, they're trepidatious. Or they're always kind of just watching. Like they, th- So many people won't make a decision about what they're going to do until they see how you might react. Right? That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And you've got to be better than that. So whatever it is you're doing, get really clear awareness. Again, start thinking, start paying attention, start noticing it. Notice it day in and day out. And you might notice in certain certain situations or circumstances with certain people. Just start paying attention. This is the most important thing. It doesn't matter what style you picked up. It doesn't matter what happened. None of that matters. At some point, you draw the line and say, okay, I'm going to be a man. And I'm going to take control take control of my issues. I'm going to heal. And I'm going to behave as my best self. I'm going to get totally dialed in. I'm going to stop using excuses. I'm going to top, stop telling stories. And again, I can speak like this because I went through it. I went through all that stuff. And at some point I just said, stop. Yeah. Like, yeah, 
I, I'm sensitive and I'm needy and I'm afraid of being abandoned. I'm afraid of being alone. And, and it was all because of what happened to me in childhood. And then I stopped and like, wait a minute, I'm not a child anymore. I'm a man and I get to choose what I feel. I get to become really comfortable in my own skin. I get to be healthy and realize, no, I'm, I'm a great person. I'm working on myself. I'm getting better. And the right, I'm going to love people. And the right person is going to love me. And I'm going to work harder on myself than I do on anything else. And I'm going to work on my marriage. Because if you're not working on your marriage, then by default, you're working on your divorce. And so I'm going to work on those things. And then you realize, man, I don't have to be afraid anymore. I don't have to be needy anymore. I don't have to be hypersensitive anymore. I can just be me and be my best self. I don't have to be grumpy. I don't have to be stressed. Stress is a choice. I don't have to be unpleasant. I don't have to get angry. I used to have a crazy temper, gentlemen. I was angry all the time, explosive. And I realized, wait a minute, this is a choice, and this choice isn't serving me. Why do I keep choosing to get angry? It's not helping me. And, and I kept trying to justify it. Well, it's because that person did this. Oh, and they did that. I'm like, bogus. I'm sitting here playing the victim like a little baby. No way. It doesn't matter what they do. I get to choose. And so you become sovereign. And again, you're not becoming numb. You actually feel more and have a, a greater variety of feeling. You're more of a man. It's incredible. But you have to take absolute ownership and responsibility for your thoughts and your emotions and your skills, your relationship sp skills specifically. So study it. Practice it. Have just total openness and transparency with people in your life and and get to a place where you can, you can ask them and say, hey, I'm, I want to be better. Where are my weaknesses? What are my tendencies? Have I made you afraid of me? Or do you, do you dread me coming home? Do you look forward to it? Like, what, what, have, I, what have I done? What, what have been some of my habits? Tell me about me. Like, and this, you got to be humble and you got to keep your mouth shut. No justifying. No, you just listen and take notes and, and then walk away. And, and if, all of your kids are like, yeah, you are kind of mean. You're, you're reactive. You're like, yeah, we're, we're actually we're afraid to tell you stuff. Or, yeah, you're great, except when we go on vacation. And you're a, not, we, like, none of us look forward to going on vacation with you because you're such a grump. Or they're like, yeah, Dad, the only time we like you is when you're on vacation. Wherever you're home, you're just stressed all the time. You're busy all the time. Don't sit there and justify and rationalize again. Like, oh, it's like this. Well, don't do that crap. If you're afraid of the lack of money or whatever it is, man, any issue that's there that's affecting your relationships, look at it, write it down, articulate it, ask people who know you well. It's like, is this accurate? And get to the root cause and then stop it. Resolve it. And it can totally transform your life. Like it did for me, like it does for my clients. It is awesome. If you need some help, Join the Be The Man Masterclass tribe. That's, that's why I created the Masterclass. That's why we have the tribe. So we can all go through this together. We support each other. You get the, the training, the tactics, the tools, the systems, the strategies, the accountability, the inspiration and motivation to get this so dialed in so you can have that support and strength, the reminders and the tools to make those changes. So you can develop and cultivate those relationship skills and build truly phenomenal relationships in your life. And life is all about relationships, gentlemen. It is all about relationships. Because if you don't have them, you're lonely. Or if you have them and they're not good, then you're miserable. And the greatest joy and peace and happiness and meaning and fulfillment in life is through our relationship. So work on those skills. Practice those skills. Learn everything you can. Um, if you if you want to help, if you want some more help, you have questions, shoot out questions, connect with me. Again, join join the Masterclass and Tribe. Um, reach out to me however you can. If you like this, if you like this uh, episode or you know someone needs to listen to it, share it with friends, family, colleagues. Uh, and if you like the podcast, go ahead and, and leave a review for me so we can share this and get this out in front of other men because this is one of the most important skills and elements of life. Love you, fellas. Thanks for listening. Be the man.